wild times. Mm. <laughs> ah. Woo! Yeah! Oh, what handsome fellas you both know, are today. Bro. Bonus I'm pod, wild times. I don't know. Some episode. doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah we're just um, doing an extra podcast this week. Yeah. yeah. Our friends over at Brack Hosh. have looks up. so nice. Oh, dude. I Thanks. feel good. I you, feel like I look good. Yeah. So for those that don't know, I'm your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist. This is my good friend, Patrick DeLuca, my other good friend, Peter yep. Fitzer. And collectively, we host the Wild Times podcast. Yep. That's the most straightforward intro I've ever done. I know. Yeah. That's yeah. how it should did be you re- every time. Did you recite that beforehand? No, I just thought of it as we spoke. But wow. I'm trying to get through it to explain why we're so beautifully dressed today. I know. Okay. Yeah. We Copy that. Good. You see, we decided today that we were going to dress up. We were all going to wear a nice button down shirt. Yep. And some podcasts ago, I don't know, 20-ish maybe, mm-hmm. I gave you guys a little prezi. Did yeah. I not? That's right. Yeah. yeah. The brackish bow tie. So I went to an event at the Explorers Club. I went to the ECAD, the Explorers Club annual dinner. Very posh, very posh event. I bet. And uh, in doing so, I went and bought a set of brackish accessories. I was like, I'm the animal guy. I got to be dressed up in something animal clad. Sure, but, yeah. And, and what is it about, uh, why, is that an- why are they related to animals? Well, because I'm the animal guy at the at the dinner, so I was like, I, you know, I'm not going to go wearing a mink coat. But the bow ties are made out of animal feathers. I'm getting there. Would you calm down? Sorry, sorry, Thank I fucked you. it up. Just Pat's furious. So excited. Apologies. Um, and so when I went to the dinner, I bought these nice brackish bow ties. I reached out to them. I tagged them on social, and they're like, "Those are so great." Got them for you guys yeah. a few weeks later. Gifted yep. them, and um, you know, we said we were going to try and go to a nice formal event, of which. <laughs> We've all had babies and no formal events. <laughs> yeah, so we're here in my garage. <laughs> so we're in the garage in button-down shirts with feathered bow ties. Dude, this bow tie is so sweet. I feel as free as a bird. You're very elegant looking. Yeah, I mean, the, the, pro- the problem is, is the like, I look like <laughs> the guy from ACDC who wears yeah. the dress shirt and the shorts. Yes, correct. It's but, a good look, though. But, but I'm fat, so it's like he looks good in it. Because he's like a skinny guy running around with a guitar. Yeah. I look good in it because it's a brackish bow tie. It's the only reason. Anyway, there's more to it than this. It's not just us. Oh, good. Nice pull. It's not just us wearing nice shirts and bow ties. We thought with the holidays coming up, you guys at home might like to get somebody special and unbelievable, super cool, sustainably farmed feather bow tie. So we're doing a giveaway. Um, all you have to do is click the link in the descriptor below. Yep, yep. descriptor. Fill out the details. Mm-hmm. Description, descriptor, I don't know. Just mm-hmm. click the link below. Fill yeah. out your details. You could win 500 bucks to pick any brackish accessories. Doesn't have to be a bow tie. It can be yeah. whatever you like. That gets you almost two full sets. It gets you... It gets you and the full set comes with the bow tie and the cufflinks, right? Cufflinks, the buttons. Um, it's beautiful. It's, it's really so nice, nice stuff. I have mine awesome. over there. I just didn't know how to put it on. Yeah, no, uh, I, I would have no idea. But yeah, enter. It's cool. That's it. Win that's some stuff. It. Yep. All right, so getting into uh, something we always like What's to do. What's going on? What's, What's, in, in, the What's in the news? What's in the news? Uh, you guys might have heard we talked about it on the pod before. South Africa's great white sharks. They've been under massive pressure from port and starboard, those two infamous orcas that have been hammering right. the white sharks, right? right? I haven't heard about this. What happened? We talked about it extensively. <laughs> we did? Mm-hmm. I usually listen. That's I okay. find that it's hard okay. to believe. In South Africa, which has always been the hub in Hansbai for great white sharks, right? It's where yeah. all the air jaw stuff happens. It's, you know, it's incredible. In the last four or five years... Two orcas, two brothers named Port and Starboard moved in and just started hammering the white sharks, killing wow. all the white sharks, eating their livers, like killing them for fun. Jesus. Yeah, gnarly, gnarly stuff. And, um, you know, a lot of people in South Africa thought that the great white sharks were gone because you go to Seal Island now, there's not a white shark to be seen. You put bait out for 10 hours, nothing shows up. And it's all because of these two orcas, right? Crazy. So this led to a significant decline in the white sharks to the point that everybody thought they were gone. Um, and, uh, you know, keep in mind, as I explain the story, keep in mind, great white sharks like cold water, Yeah, right? That's why they're near Cape Town. That's why they're, uh, in False Bay and Hansby is because they like that cold, rich water upwelling lots of seals and right, sea lions. Right, right. So when the orcas moved in, which typically also like pretty chilly water, right? they're like, oh, the white sharks are gone. They've, they've removed them. <laughs> right. Well, here's, here's the kicker. Just found them. They're they found. Wait, they found, found where they evacuated to? They found where the or- where the white sharks went. Wow. Get this. South Africa is incredible. One of the reasons it's so diverse is two oceans meet there, right? The Indian and the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. And you have super freezing cold water from the Atlantic and super warm hot water from the Indian, and it meets there. And so nobody thought for the for the life of them that the sharks would move east. 
into okay. the warm water. Doesn't yeah. make sense. White sharks don't like warm water. It speeds up their metabolism. They, don't even they look need to there eat for more. Them. It just doesn't make sense. They need to eat more. It speeds up their metabolism. The water's too warm. There's not enough seals or sea lions there right. because they're on the cold water side. Yeah. Sure enough, in off the coast of Kwazulu Natal, Algoa Bay, bam, there they are. Whole they're all there. Giant population of giant white sharks. Wow, that's Think about crazy. That. So, Coordinated relocation. So this is going to cause all sorts of issues, right? For sure. With them moving into a new area, areas where humans have used the waters and don't, you know, don't expect a bunch of white sharks. Now, when you, we'll, when yeah. you look at white shark tracking data, you see that they move from Cape Town, you know, up into the Indian Ocean a little bit and then back down. But the fact that they're like hanging out in KwaZulu Natal in the Indian Ocean is right. crazy, especially like in the area Algoa Bay and stuff where people like to swim and surf. It's like a tra- it's somewhere you go for your tropical holiday, right? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go to nice, warm, clear water, have a swim. Now there's a whole bunch of giant white sharks there, which, yeah, like you said, it's going to cause significant ecological changes. W- will they attack humans? I mean, like, are, will they. Will they interfere with the humans or will they kind of stay back out of the out of their way? Oh no. I mean, I would think, you know, look, first of all, I'm not gonna paint white sharks no, in hundred percent. They're gonna start Don't attacking do that. humans. Right. But they're in an area that has far less prey density for what they're used to eating. Sure. And humans look very much like their main prey, seals right. and sea lions. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're in an area where humans are less accustomed to shark human interactions right, right? Sure. so they're not used to being like oh well don't swim here shouldn't be out at dusk shouldn't be out at dawn yeah. you know they're in an area where people go to have their tropical holiday so yeah. i don't know how close into shore they are but my guess is you will see some problems in the future interesting all because of these two orcas who are yep. just like yeah this is great they're pricks port and starboard are they still there do still they still there them? oh yeah roaming around i saw them when i was there in february dude really? i really yeah Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I think that the orcas are really uh, starting to come together and figure out that they hate humans because (laughs) not only is this happening, but they've also been attacking humans on the regular. In Spain, they've been the, what is it, Gulf of, uh, not Oman, what's it called? Gulf Gibraltar? Of Gibraltar, yeah, they've been attacking those sailboats. I mean, I'm not even kidding. It's kind of fucked up. Like they're moving the sharks over to where the humans are swimming. They're attacking humans. Are yeah. they communicating and setting, like, trying to start a war with us? Uh, if they are, we're gonna lose. But I hope um, so. Yeah, I really they're much do. smarter than we are. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty crazy though. So, it so is when crazy. you went and saw them, what were you actually looking for them? No. So we, it's funny, we sold this Discovery Channel shark show uh-huh. and it was about the seven gills. So the orcas, now that they've knocked down all of the white sharks, they've moved on to killing the seven gills. Right. Type in uh, seven gills up there, Kyle, port and starboard seven gills. And uh, you'll see they're, they're, they're doing these massive killing sprees, like 30, 40, seven gills a day. Jeez. Um, big piles. Uh, they're not, I guess they're not doing any, none of the picks of the piles, but they're killing these seven gills. And so we're like, oh, let's go see if we can find what's going on with the seven gills, how right. that's altering their behavior. And the network was like, oh, it'd be so cool if you got port and starboard and filmed them. I'm like, I'm not going to find two orcas in a <laughs> 400 mile wide bay. Like, right. shut up. Day five. They but it would be cool. Day five, right next to the boat. Literally, I'm in the water and Mitch goes, I think I just saw an orca. And I'm like, shut up, Mitch. You're such an idiot. You always <laughs> say such stupid things like get out of the water during that lightning storm. And uh-huh. uh, <laughs> and um, sure enough, like two minutes later, poof, right next to the boat, the two of them. And they're very distinguishable. They're called port and starboard because one's fin goes port and the other okay. goes starboard. Did they come right up next wow. to the boat? Were they checking it out? So they get harassed a shitload because where we were is right by where all the white shark ecotourism sure, is. So the sure. fishermen hate them. So they yeah. like throw stuff at them and chase them with boats and stuff. But they came probably 40 feet from our boat. Dude, it's a fucking war with the orcas. Oh, yeah, big time. We got them on drone. We got them on camera. We didn't get them underwater. We tried, but it's uh, it was awesome. Dude, it's crazy to think about this animal behavior that that's happening. This is so complex that... I mean, you would never, as somebody like who's a layman and doesn't know that much about animals, to think that this is happening in the world outside of like the human population is fucking fascinating. It's nuts. Yeah, it's It's crazy. Anyway, that's the biggest news that I saw this week. Thought it was pretty sweet. So did you say that they're killing the sharks for fun? The orcas are? Yeah, they're just, they're just... It's like two brothers, right? They're bachelors. They're yeah. two bros. I'm not uh, joking. Yeah, I was going to ask, are they like a pair, like a mating pair nope, or something? just bros. Literal brothers. Okay. Two Literal brothers, brothers. Two bros that are just cruising around, and they're just, they are eating a lot of the shark livers, but nothing else, and they're just doing it for fun. What's they're up just, with that? What's up with the, them eating the livers? Is that... 
highest nutrient density, yeah. highest amount of fat, best for them. Delicious. Yep, you know, that, that's just yeah. what they're choosing to go for. So they'll kill an entire 16 foot great white shark and surgically remove the liver with their teeth, chew a few bites of it and be like, yeah, that was fun. Let's go do it again. Wow, Interesting. Man. It's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. yeah it's it like really the bear is. with salmon. Like during yeah, the salmon spawn. Exactly right. Like, going yep, for the row. Liver. Yep. Eggs. I'm um, out. <laughs> They're so smart. Hey guys, if you're enjoying. Whoops. Guys, if you like the Wild Times, check us out on Patreon. We put out four extra podcasts per month. That's one commute a week that you're just going to be laughing and learning the whole time in the car. <laughs> hey, let me do, do something else. This is the late night content. The stuff that we, we can't show on, on YouTube because they'll kick us off YouTube. It's the Cinemax of podcasts. <laughs> Uncensored, raw dog. It's the Cinemax of podcasts. Check it out. Link right here. I saw another good news story uh, yesterday coming out of Africa as well that I was pretty excited about. Mm. The first time, I think, in 50 or so years, rhino populations are on the up. Interesting. Really? Yeah, I was really, really excited about it. has to be just because of like protection efforts? Yeah, anti-poaching. Working. Yeah, so um, I don't know. i see if Kyle can find the news story. Africa's white rhino population rebounds for first time wow. in a decade, new figures show. So 5.2% um, increase uh, between 2021 and now, which is fantastic. Is the uh, I thought the white rhino was only left with the two females. The northern white rhino. Uh. So there's northern and southern white rhino, and the white the southern population is you know only five percent up or so. But that's hey, that's really good. It's better than the down. So it's five yeah. percent up rather than being twenty percent down, which it has been year after right. year. And the population's up to around sixteen, seventeen thousand individuals, which is. It's, it might sound like a lot. It's not for no, rhinos, it's great. but it's great. I mean, it's just good news. It's nice to see happy news. Most yes. of the news you see around poaching and animals like rhinos is just like, oh, it's the end, it's the end, it's the end. Right. Yeah. So and I was really happy to see that. One of the things they're doing is actually going and tranquilizing the rhinos and actually taking the horns. Yeah. So that poachers mm -hmm. don't kill them for the horn. Yes, but it's such a mess because... They kill them anyway. They kill them anyway, yeah. They're just to spite that effort. But it's not even uh, just to spite it. What happens is, you know, you have let's say 10 rhino in this huge 100,000 acre park. Yeah. The poachers will spend five days tracking a rhino and get there and it's been dehorned. Two things. One, they're going to kill it so they don't ever have to spend five days tracking it again uh, yeah. because they're gotcha. at such high risk while tracking it. And two, when you dehorn a rhino, you still leave like a giant, a disc like that big because you can't cut it yeah. out of its skull, right? right? Right, And even that disc is worth retiring for if you're, Jesus. If you're a poacher, right? So it does help for sure. And if, if you're like, oh, this entire park is dehorned, the likelihood that they're going to fuck with you is pretty slim. Yeah, they're not even going to come over to that. Right, park. it's not worth it. But still, it's it's not exactly like a, pr a fantastic, you know, proven methodology. One that was that for some reason got outlawed, which honestly infuriated me because I thought it was brilliant. Was mm. they were putting cyanide in the rhino horns, mm. and oh, uh, it, it had no ill effect on the rhinos because just a big fingernail. Yeah, right. and then it would get ground up into dick pills or whatever, and you'd have these Chinese businessmen dropping dead in China. Um, Man, what's the what's the, the downside out. of that? Yeah, yeah. What, don't take these rhino pills. I know. I thought that was fantastic. Also, everybody involved in the entire operation should eat fucking cyanide, know, cyanide, yeah. arsenic, whatever you want to put in there. Yeah, exactly. Do they use FLIR drones? Like, yeah. I feel like yeah. yeah, they're using thermal drones. So it's say, tough for a, a poacher good... to use a drone because it's you can hear it, you can see it. Oh yeah, know. no, I was saying for the anti poaching units. Yeah, and it's why, like, you know, we have always got special permissions when I've worked in Africa to get thermal drones in, but the drone regulations in Africa are oh bonkers. Yeah. It's so difficult to deal with them. Do the, do the, uh, the, is the anti poaching movement like growing stronger and stronger? I think so. The next generation of Asian people that have these beliefs, mostly Chinese and Vietnamese, like the kid, like our age and younger. Yeah. I don't think they're follow, falling into this the way that their their parents did and grandparents did, right? Sure. I think they're, like, there's enough education now. There's There will always be those extremists, no matter what, sure, right? Of sure. course. But I think there's enough education and understanding now that, like, hey, it's literally a fingernail. It's not going to make my dick bigger. And yeah. it's incredibly frowned upon globally. And just because grandpa did it and dad did it doesn't mean I need to do it. You know, right. it's the same way. It's like the same thing as racism. It's like, yeah, yeah well, we were all racist back then, but I'm, well, I'm done with that. You uh, know? Even, even just conservation and like global warming and everything, the younger generation understands like, hey, if we keep doing this stuff, we're going to... Uh, 
we're not going to have anywhere for our kids to be. Right. You know? Right. Right. So that's good. Um, I mean, that's good to hear that. Uh, but I, I do like the thought of the poachers out there actively being hunted down. Um, yeah, and you know what's crazy is like, so that's overall, right? But then you look at places that are really, really vast that have much less enforcement, like Namibia. Yeah. Namibia is home to the world's largest black rhino population. Mm. So a 93% increase in poaching. Ugh. You know, so it's like, oh, well, we're not able to get them over in South Africa because of these measures and protections. Let's shift over to Namibia. Gotcha. 93 increase in percent increase in poaching. Now, you know, I mean, so. dude. But that'll come ridiculous. and then the regulation will come there and enforcement will come. And, yeah. you know, we, it's, a, it's a fight you have to keep fighting. So... Yeah. Another news story that I saw that was interesting is like, because you read stuff and then you're like, oh, I wonder how that's going to affect certain things. Yeah. Remember how we were talking about um, like how the water in like Biscayne Bay and some of those parts of Florida was over 100 degrees yeah. on the Gulf side? Causing big die offs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, you know, it's going to affect seagrasses and corals. Um, but one thing that they're, that they're now seeing is with that increase in the water temperature, the... Uh, these huge algae blooms yeah. are starting. Yep. And so they're starting oh, to man. find that a ton of the seabirds are dying of botulism. Oh, interesting. Because those huh. algae blooms somehow produce the botulism toxin. Interesting. Wow. And so they're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, this is another thing. Like now Everything. the seabirds are all dying of botulism. It's all like it's all chain reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. It's all It's all very connected. And it's also interesting just like the way that humans have moved water around yeah. and gotten involved in like how water moves and yep. it all runs together. And you're like, Oh, right. Because they're farming, you know, Soybeans, 300 potatoes. miles North. Yep. Yeah. You're man. getting all the stuff that's killing the coral in the ocean. And, and the kind of the sad really thing too, is that, you know, this can all like all the agriculture that we do to, we can do enough to sustain literally the entire world, every human being on it Yeah, with way less than what we do. It's just, there's so much waste and there's so much like non change of the systems, even though we, we advance the technology and the science and we know things, people just stick to the old, the old way of doing things. And it just wastes a ton of, of energy and of everything. I mean the, the algae thing when I was in Mexico back in like 2017 or six, I can't remember, but the entire coast of Mexico was just covered in algae. They had like nets up to keep uh, it. The sargassum. I'm pretty sure it was a sargassum. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it might be different, but the fact of the matter is, is like the algae was like insane. It's supposed to be these beautiful, clear, yeah. warm, tropical waters. I get there like half oh, the yeah. resort. Nobody's there first right. of all because they don't want to come because they're they're using literal payloaders to get this algae. Oh, and, and it stinks. It rots. It stinks. It creates yeah. flies. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And they tried to cover it up big time because they want people to still go there. Oh, dude, I get it, but it's like this is what we're doing to the world, man. Where where I went to this place called it's beautiful called Wakatobi Dive Lodge in Indonesia. This was 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, every morning. Pre dawn, there was five guys out on the beach cleaning up the plastic because oh, the wow. plastic would wash in. Because where Wakatobi is in Indonesia, the currents fi- funnel in from like India and Jakarta. Oh man! And it, literally, you'd wake up, and if you got up pre dawn, which I was all jet lag, so I'd get up, you know, like all hours of the night. Yeah. It was just a blanket of plastic garbage. And by the time you woke up and were sitting at breakfast overlooking, it was a pristine white beach because they right. just have twenty guys out there picking up, raking all of the plastic garbage and then, you know, hiding it so that you could think that it was just perfect. It's crazy. sad, man. It's, it's the, crazy. It, it's the, uh, it's the crying Indian on the side of the road of 2023, man. The visuals of like the plastic, just an entire beach front yeah. covered in plastic bottles and shit, you know? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. I know. Not to be a downer. <laughs> no, it's good. <laughs> it's good to weird. talk about though. Yeah. Huh? No, I say, but yeah, sometimes you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Once in a while. But it is it is interesting though, right? So like one of the projects I'm working on, a TV project, is very largely it's a, sort of a con- very conservation forward uh-huh. show. Nice. Love that. Which which Love they're that. very hard to do. Very right. It's um, a it's a I, I literally you probably were in the meeting with me. I remember being told don't say the word conservation right. in network meetings. Oh, That's yeah. why you started the, the podcast, literally. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, I mean, when I did that, the show in Greenland, that the premise of the show was the ice sheet receding and so new land is being exposed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we're not allowed to say Global why the warming. ice sheet was yeah. receding, mm-hmm. just That's that the ice up. sheet's pulling back. <laughs> but so, but it is interesting, like with this show, 
even though it's sort of conservation forward, you have to be really careful about not just going grim, grim, grim. I, no, yes. it's, right? It's, it's like, hey, yeah. here's an issue. And then it's like, but here's all the stuff that's cool that's being done to yeah. combat it, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Like, y- you know, because otherwise you're just going to lose people. It's like, you know. Yeah, it's depressing. Nobody wants to hear it. It's a page it. turner. You right. don't yeah. want to look at the doom and gloom and go, oh, let me tune in and hear about how well, the world's going to end. <laughs> right. Like, there, yeah, there, also, there also is so much exciting stuff in the animal world. Like, even on the podcast and and... You know, the shit that I, when we went to Animal Con, there's so much like excitement and exciting, happy things going on in the animal world as well. So when you get in like a rut, you can get in a rut of anything. Like you watch the news, dude, you'll just be depressed all day. Oh, uh, all of day. course. Yeah. So yeah. Eh, we that's, keep it even keel that's, here. That's what the news thrives on. Exactly. It's like, how do we shock and awe you? Yeah. I mean, dude, how do all, we ruin your it's life? Really it's a whole strategy. It was became huge in the in the 1950s and 60s of marketing. Yeah. Like a like very pre- marketing. Exactly. A very prevalent yeah. strategy is to scare you. Yeah. Right? And scare you that if you miss out it's not even just a fear of missing out. It's like these are big threats to you. You need yeah. to know about these things and if you don't hear about them, you will die. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um so speaking of that, what do you got, sir? Last night 3 in the morning. Mhm. <laughs> All the fire alarms in my house, they're all ganged together. Okay. Right? Fancy. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's a newer construction, right? So right. <laughs> they all start going off and a voice starts saying, fire, fire oh detected. God. Oh, God. Fire, fire Major detected. Yeah. What was your first yeah. move? What was your first move? I, like, jumped out of bed. I keep my, uh, that giant Satan light next to my bed. Yeah, smart. Turned that on. Uh, just went out and just, like, ran out and, like, checked the house. Yeah. Did you think everything. it was legit or do you think it was a false alarm right off the bat? No, I thought it was legit. I was just okay. cuz it's saying there's a fire really loud in the yes. Especially when the machine's actually saying the fire. Word fire. Yeah. It's yeah. different to like <laughs> beep beep beep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that my alarm? I'm like, holy crap, fire? something's on fire. Check yeah. the kids' room whatever. Go around. There's no fire in the house, no fire in the garage. I'm like, what the hell? Go around the side. I like went, you know, looked in the crawl space. Uh-huh. No fire. Um but it started getting me thinking, and then I couldn't fall back asleep. I don't own a fire extinguisher. <laughs> it's like, what would no. you have even done? Yeah, what done? do you do at that point? Just do throw you, paper towels at it. Yeah, do you do you have a fire extinguisher in your house? No, I don't. Do you? No. They're $20. Yeah. And they're good for six to ten years. And no one owns one. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I, it's a good no, there could have been a fire dun- that I could have burned my house down that if I had just spent $20 on Amazon, mm-hmm. it's I could have fixed that. It's the dumbest what, thing So in what's the, world? the key move? You run to the sink and get a pot of water. And throw it on something. I guess. Let it fill. You yeah. got to go to the what tub, do you dude. Do? You got to get the tub. You got to fill it with the tub. But, dude, you're right, man. And I do think about these things sometimes. I'm like, oh, I don't have a, I don't have a fire extinguisher. Because I've seen, like I've watched in movies and stuff, you see how a fire spreads. Like, oh, it'll, yeah. It'll catch. It's very controllable. But if you don't have a fire extinguisher, yep. like you can do nothing. You're just yep. like, let me just run out of the house and get my pets and my kid and get the fuck out of here. I yep. know a guy that had a break-in into his house okay. in the middle of the night. Lives in West Hollywood. Lives in a like first story apartment, and he, the guy came into his room and he sprayed the guy with the fire extinguisher, and the guy <laughs> ran out. Really? Shit. Yeah. Huh. It has a second purpose. Yeah, exactly. I well, like and it's that. a big red metal thing that you can yeah. Bonk if you hit someone somebody with. with a fire extinguisher, they're down. Well, yeah. First you spray him in the face, then you conk him on the head. Makes yeah. Sense. Adds yeah. Up. Hmm. We're What's not a- sponsored by fire extinguisher. No. Not yet. No, yeah. Not yet. Just, not just yet. brackish no. bow ties. Um. That's interesting. I hadn't really thought of that. I probably should get a fire extinguisher, all things considered. I think I have we so should all get some. fucking plugs and heat lamps and shit plugged in everywhere. Oh, oh my yeah. God, dude. Yeah. Your house is a fire hazard. When I was thinking, as I, I was like, it's in the crawl space. I'm like, I don't know anything about what's going on down there. <laughs> no. There's yeah. wires everywhere. No. There's God. gas lines. Yeah. I'm like, it's it's definitely There's the crawl space. There's probably just a little gnome with a sparker just going like <laughs> At all times. Yeah. <laughs> At all times. Did you a see... The NFL player is a tight end for the Browns that burnt, literally burned his face off. What? No, what why? happened? He just was lighting his fire pit at night, like oh, two, two days before the game. Burned his face off. Played in the game. Oh, oh my wow. god! Yeah, Dude, he looks like a beast there. Oh, oh yeah, he's um, a monster, David and Joku. But there's there's a picture of his face, Kyle. Um, wow. But just something as innocuous as just like look at the one to the far right there. Holy oh, shit! Yeah, he no. got himself. What a nightmare! Oh, I, he's gotten a lot better. God. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, but I, just lighten a fire pit. I did something pretty some similar fun. to one of my best friends in college. God, you're the Cor- worst. Of course you did. 
So my buddy Tommy Dutra, R.I.P. Um, really? Yeah, he Did passed you? away in a rock climbing accident. Didn't I didn't kill, kill him. him. No, okay. Him. Okay. Good. Um, <laughs> one of my best friends uh, ever. He his twenty first birthday. We were at his house in Isla Vista, and I we line up all this one fifty one, light it all on fire, and I'm like flaming shots. I've never done a flaming shot before. And he's didn't know you could. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, and he's like, how do you do it? I'm like, I don't know. I think you just drink it. Oh, God. <laughs> so he's like, all right, let's go. So he grabs it and goes, oh, he doesn't my blow it God. out. You're supposed to blow yeah, it out. Yeah, you got to blow it out. I would. I didn't know this. Yeah, so he goes like out. that, and it catches his lips on fire, and he's got like a stubble beard like you. And oh, it catches his God. whole fucking beard on fire in his face. Jesus Christ. And his Christ. whole face is like glowing fire. And I grab a kitchen towel and like slap him in the face with it. Which put it out, but he got like third degree burns or Terrible. second degree burns like all over his face and mouth and I had to rush him to the yeah. ER. Kyle appears to have pulled up a video. Well, it, oh wasn't, my God. Quite, it wasn't quite you like that. You can't play this on air. <laughs> I, oh God, we can't, we can't put this on. How did this happen? We can't oh. put this on air, yeah. What? That's we can a, put that on air. What are you talking that's about? Flaming shots gone wrong. That's Let's at see. a restaurant. The server is serving them and catches a lady. Oh yeah. my God. That's what happens though. So the 151 yeah. just is... Is fuel. so flammable. Yeah. yeah, it's the most flammable thing I, in the I, world. I got a friend named. Yeah, that's what happened to Tommy. That exact yeah. thing you just saw. To go back, show that one again. This is it. That's exactly oh what God, happened. Oh my God! It's because he spits it out too. That's exactly and then what it happened like to my buddy. And up. it goes all over your face. Dude, yeah. I got one to a less degree. My buddy George, back in high school, there was an infamous video that went around our circle. Okay. And uh, he did the 151 or the Everclear. I can't remember, but did the same thing in the shot glass. And then took a sip of it and just flamed down, yeah. like yeah. just like it's insane. Here's here's a good thing to do is if you want to get drunk, just don't light it on fire. Just don't light your shot on fire. <laughs> yeah, it's that simple. Drink it. Um, get says drunk. A couple of middle aged old men who have done a lot of fun. I'd still do a fun. flaming shot right now. You would? Of course. Well, yeah, Listen, you still got to do that spicy chip challenge. We're making Kyle do it. Don't tell him. Oh, shit. He yeah. won't do it. Uh, I'm going to put it on his nutsack. Ah! Yeah. Um, we, got, we got some DMs here. Hey, brosters. Thank you for being loyal subscribers. We appreciate everything that you do. And now we have a membership offer for you. Uh, I think you can get ad-free episodes, I heard. That's pretty big. Ad-free is big, but you can also get your comments looked at so we don't have to sift through the millions. How do you do that? There. Is there some sort of badge system? There's a badge system, <laughs> a loyalty badge. <laughs> Boom. Shows up next to your name in the comments. Boom. Oh, we man. read the comment. All this badge talks. Make, I'm going to the badge store. He's going to You're get a badger. badger. He's going he's gonna to buy one. Didn't earn it. He's going to buy one. He did a fake leave. <laughs> well, I assumed Kyle would know to cut on the motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cut now. That's, that's our ad. Yeah, let's get into Some Broster, broster DMs. DMs. We haven't done that in a I, I want to see if you know these answers. All right, let's us. do it. From Brandon. Is it true that sharks give birth in shallow waters to stay away from bigger predators? Of course. That's why mangrove <laughs> estuaries exist. They go into those nice estuaries where it's safe sure. and there's no predators, and they pup, and then they head back out. Oh, that's interesting. Fantastic. Yeah. Makes total sense. Why wouldn't it? Mangrove yeah, estuaries, I mean, are those human built? No, no. So those exist, and then they, they've just learned to go in there and yeah, get Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's why they exist, but in a mangrove, right, in right. an estuary, that's one of the main nurseries for all fish and sharks. Yeah. They'll go in there because it's got all these buttress roots to hide in. Yeah. Shallow, there's yep. no big predators, and they'll they'll pup and cruise back out. Well, you're talking to a guy who doesn't even know what a mangrove is. Is that a fruit? <sighs> It's, type of, it's, it's a, a tree. tree, yeah. It's a saltwater tree. Does it produce a fruit? Impassable. No, impossible. Yeah. yeah. No, it doesn't the produce The only fruit. impassable it's, terrain. There's two types of mangroves. This is pretty interesting. So a mangrove is a tree, like the tree you see out Patrick's window there, oh, yeah. that grows in the salt water. Okay. okay. How do you think a tree can cope with salt? It has to have some kind of mechanism that filters it out. Two kinds, excluders and excretors. Okay. So excluders have such watertight bark and roots and everything that they can actually exclude the salt from entering into their system. Yeah. Which is an insane thing to think yeah, if you think crazy. that trees breathe through their, their bark. Yeah, right? it really is crazy. And then even crazier, in my opinion, is excretors, which will take in salt water, ocean water, filter it, yeah. and then push the salt back out so that they get fresh water from the sea. Bro, that's crazy. And it's a tree. We're talking about a tree. Humans have been trying to do that without success for like right. seven decades. Pretty amazing. Why aren't they looking at these damn trees? I know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. What else do we have, Kyle? Hey, bros. Just wanted to get your opinion. This was Nate Roper, mm -hmm. friend mm -hmm. of the pod. Thanks, Love Nate. It. Yeah. Wanted to get your opinion on all of the bonkers weather that's been going on around the world. I saw a flood pick up a Corolla and sweep it away like it was Retep with a taco drunk on a Thursday night. Great comment. 
I just, well, I'm just glad you read the comment. I don't, I don't yeah. know that there's a take to be had. It's just a great comment. Well, yeah. there, there's something about the, uh, comparing the taco to the Corolla that really w- warms the cockles well, in my heart. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Weather events are getting stronger. Yeah. Mm. Fact. Yeah. Fires are getting more severe. It's, it, it, is, it can be human-induced, climate-induced, and call it whatever you like. I don't sure. care if you're religious, not religious, believe in global warming, don't believe in global warming. I don't care. Yeah. Just look at the stats. Weather events are getting stronger. Storms are getting stronger. Floods are getting more intense. Mm. Fires are getting hotter. The, Dude. Uh, droughts are getting drier. Yeah. Dumps are getting wetter. Like It's happening. We've been out. I, I've been out here for about 13, 14 years now. And we, I, we just went in Southern California through uh, a five year, like a, a drought that yeah. was every year. It was like, oh, now it's like an extreme drought. Right. Oh, now it's like a hundred on the scale exactly. of drought. Yep. And then just boom, fucking rains. The rainiest season we've had in like a hundred yeah, years. It was phenomenal. And I now, loved how much. And now we're getting there. destroyed by invasive mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah. We complain about it on every podcast <laughs> Keep until going somebody back. does something. There I mean, I mean, it's also interesting to like think about like going way back to like the mini ice age and yeah. like some of those yeah. things. And it's like, Oh, humans were living in societies. Right. Right. Wow. And I like never thought of that, the, like they just, an, an ice age came yep. dude, where yeah. the entire planet got cold. Just froze over. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's going to happen it's again. Absolutely crazy. I mean, it happened what? 13,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like right. there were, you know, cities essentially. The, the yep. problem too, though, just with, with, with us humans is like, we don't like to, well, I'll, I'll say this, a, only a small percentage of us are willing to or like to acknowledge that these things are happening and want to like tackle the problem. Yeah. The other 99% are like, eh, like I'm good now. I mean, dude, I'm guilty of it. Don't, you know, I'm not out there fucking coming up yeah, with any solutions. There's a huge percentage of it that you can do something about. But then there's also like, there are just like massive global weather events that, you know, aren't due to. That was that wasn't because of anything humans, did. right? Right. Right. Well, how do you yeah. even discern the two? Like, well, how do you do it? But that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what you believe or what your hypothesis is. It's the weather is changing, and it always will be. By the way, yeah, it's always changing. Right. I was going to say just it's a factor. Like, I was going to say it's like even if we even if, okay, so global warming is is real. I do believe that that man man made global warming. It's definitely like doing it faster, making it worse. Mm-hmm. But so if it's going to happen anyways, right? Like, are we how do you how do you fix the problem if it's going to happen anyways? Is it is it really worth? Well, no. The argument is that we're speeding it up so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can't stop an asteroid from hitting the Earth. <laughs> That's right? true. But- Are we allowed to show these, Kyle? I'd love to go through these. I always love these. Sorry, I, I think we can show just show them quickly. Okay. Yeah, you can flash to him. All right, so Kyle, I, I just interrupted Patrick. I didn't mean to. I just got excited because I saw uh, what Kyle has pulled up here is the Wildlife Photographer of the Year winners. Yeah, um, yep. I, I think we this. did this last year too. On did the, we? Yeah. yeah, I love this contest. Yeah. Yeah. let's it's let's scroll great. through them real quick. Oh, I've seen this photo on social lately. It's what fantastic. Is, what is that? That is a horseshoe crab with three little pilot fish above it. Dude, the lighting on that is majestic. Yeah, it's phenomenal. It's a great photo. Yeah, that's... look at those little. So at... far, that has my vote. It, one for one, no <laughs> yeah. question. I Let's... love how you can see the little dimple on it too. It's so like it's it perfect. doesn't even look like a living thing. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's a perfect All image. Right. Cool. Model. Next one. Do they give yeah, descriptors? Next. What's it say there, Kyle? A horseshoe yeah. crab. Well, nobody can hear him, so doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just curious. All right, yeah, so next. these are these are the finalists out of fifty thousand entries. Wow, yeah. dude, that's a beautiful picture. Right Incredible, there. yeah. This is a photo of the Zin Desert in Israel. Yep. And what do you got there? What are those animals there? I'm not sure. Those Some are, mountain goats. Those goat. are uh, mountain Nubian goats. ibex. Oh, oh Nubian the, the ibex. Yeah. yeah. Um, Very cool. Nubian ibex battling on top of a mountain. Yeah, and you dude. see the one going into hit. Look at that nut nuts on that. That. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Those are some that. solid testes. That's real nice. Yeah. Do you think it keeps that Good. thing trimmed? I actually right. like the, I like this guy. Yeah. I like this photo better than the horseshoe crab. Yeah, I that's mean, dude, cool. this is like the background yeah, in this the photo landscape. is amazing. It's yeah. perfect. All right, what's next? <laughs> By what's the way, if you're just listening, you got to come. What's the time? Come and look at this right now. What do we have here? So I don't see any Keep wildlife. Going down. Oh, I see him. Something. Oh, the I owls. The owls. Yeah, look at that. Two barred owls, I think. Yeah. Sitting in the window of an abandoned building that says fuck on it. Or I should just say, says FCK on it. What yeah. what what are what's the like laser light pen going through? It's got to be a car going through the frame. Ah, uh, okay. A long so exposure. That, yeah. So so without the the car streak of light on this, this isn't making it in, right? I I agree. Yeah, yeah. it's a good point. It's a good point. Yeah. 
I yeah. mean, this photo is uh, also from Ibex, Israel. Ibex for me goes higher yeah, than Ibex, yeah, that. Ibex, Ibex is yeah. in the lead. Yep. Israel. Cool. The owl picture is cool, but, you know, come on. Oh, that was the young oh, wildlife. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, okay. that's I think it's cool. like under 13 or something like that. 15 to 17. That's years. damn impressive for, is. Yeah. for an amateur. It is, for sure. Absolutely. Wow. All right, what do we got next here? This looks like an x-ray of my innards after I ate a toy car. <laughs> it's a bunch of bird poop um, <laughs> in Scotland uh, with Gannett sitting in the corner, and the, the bird poop has kind of painted the rocks to be... Dude, yeah. holy shit. I did not really think this was a photograph. My mind has been trying to process it. Really? It looks like a chalkboard with a drawing on it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's oh, black yeah, and it white. The gannets are obviously super white. The bird poop super white. And then the lava rock super black. Wild, so it's dude. Kind of Have you it. seen the pictures of those islands in Scotland where the entire island looks like it's covered in snow and it's just cormorant, oh, it's cormorant poop? <laughs> I've, st- I've stood on islands like that in Baja. It's Have you revolting. seen a cormorant poop? I've been pooped on by many okay. Yeah, It like rockets out like a super oh, soaker. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like it's what gnarly. my new daughter does. Side dude. note. I would just, when like we had downtime in the Galapagos, I would just stand by the cormorants and just watch them rocket poop everywhere. It's really, really impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Do they actually get propelled forward? Oh, dude. Yeah, like, a little bit. Like yeah. straight vertical. Yeah. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, like you remember like a super soaker 100? <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's yeah. what the stream looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. Um, Any more? That's a cool black and white photo, that one. Yes, Ibex sure. is number no one. No question. Right. Oh, wow. What do What's we this? have here? Fireflies, I'm guessing. Oh. And where is this? India. Aliens in Peru, I'm guessing. Fireflies in India. It is cool. I mean, if you think that that whole light that you're seeing is all generated by insect oh. bottoms. Oh, yeah, dude. It says that he, the photographer, combined 15 19-second exposures. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's yeah. cool. It just, cool. to me, looks a bit like mustard got squirted on a photo. Of yeah, it doesn't, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> I appreciate it, but it's not doing it for yeah, me. That, that's in and last. mustard. That's in dead last. Now that's cool. that's cool. Is that a mushroom? What is it's that? Mushroom with backlighting with the spores coming out underneath it. See the spores getting released into oh, the atmosphere. Oh shit! That's awesome. And yeah. that's timed very, very specifically because they they open the veil and drop the spores for minutes. You know, it's not like that happens wow. like all the time. So there's obviously a breeze picking up those spores. Does it say how long the exposure was here? It's also just that's a parasol mushroom releasing its spores. Very cool. It makes me want to eat. Uh, I'm still oh. going to ibex, even though this was probably a harder picture to, to get. The timing of the ibex the, is one in a it's, million. Yeah, yeah. I'm still ibex though. For it's sure. weird for me because like the last three have looked almost like like paintings. But that's and why it's, they're it's winning. It's hard to even compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them to like the ibex. Agreed. All right. All right. Next. Any more? Oh, wow. I think this there is Bertie Gregory's photo. Oh, man. It is, right? Yeah, I saw Bertie post this. Oh, it says his name right there. Yeah, I saw Bertie post this. It's so a couple these, of... these, Bertie Gregory's a famous uh, wildlife photographer, videographer. He's a really talented young guy. Yeah, um, what do we got going on here? You've got three orcas doing, I forget what the behavior is called, but it's in Antarctica. It's the only place they do this, where they're going to create a wave to knock the seal off of the iceberg. Those motherfuckers, um, dude. They're so clever. Sorry. Uh, cut that out. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. So the bubbles are, you know, Morse code to communicate. To tell ah. them. You know, Dude, they're sneaking what? up on that seal. That seal doesn't know they're there. And so. then they're about to just wave wash him, and then yep. he's going and in then the mouth. Him. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so in the cool picture, if, photo. if you're only listening, they have they have bubbles coming out from, from their mouths or wherever. They're, they're, they're blowholes. They're blowholes yep. in a sequence that they're communicating with each other through which is and if you see the picture come and look at it it's clearly like has a has a sequence that they're all matching they're it's talking probably the equivalent other. of going okay one yeah two, totally two, <gasps> three. Splash, yeah dude yeah. that is wild man <laughs> very cool this that's might a great photo. take it over for me that's fantastic the if symmetry is I, I will say this if i had to ha- if you had to have one hanging on your wall ibex yeah, it's tough. This is cool. If I had to have one I, hanging on a giant print on my wall, it's Ibex followed by mushroom spores for me right now. Okay. Really? Well, I could see that, but this is such a conversation piece it is. Yeah, that exactly. I would want this like hanging in the office. Yeah, exactly. True. All right, next. What are those? Bird what? butts. Bird butts? Five yep. bird butts. Five, Five bird little bird butts. Bird butts. What are they, Kyle? I can't tell what they are. Uh, huh? This was taken in French Guiana. Some. What are what's they? the bird? Trumpeters. Trumpeters? Okay. Speak up, sir. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't looks he didn't like some know. form of pheasant, but um, yeah, trumpeters. I don't get it. Why is this? I mean, it's okay. What's what's going on? I Why don't really get it. Interesting. All right, next pick. That's pretty. Amazing. That's pretty awesome. Oh, what is that forest some, with the horns? Some on Some mountain goat 
um, yeah. in a full whiteout. So snow this snow. is wow. Like, this is in crazy. the French Alps, and it's just a monochromatic snowy photo of some sort of goat, yeah. just in a snowstorm, huh? Yeah. Like it's pretty a, incredible. A whiteout. It looks, it looks like stippling art. You know where you take a pencil and do the tapping? Yeah, just totally. The pencil, like the shade tapping. It's so the, it says the photographer was waiting to get the photo, but his camera had frozen by the time the animal appeared, and oh, so he had to man. use his breath to thaw his camera That's out. pretty neat. Wow. Yeah. Worth it. That's do you think that's photo. true, or do you think that's I was just going to say. <laughs> it's a good story to spin to try and win an award. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Not like, oh, I was sitting in a nice warm car with the heater on. <laughs> right. Yeah, when this guy popped over the hill by the freeway. Yeah. The cool thing is if you go to any of the museums where they, where they display these photos, uh, on each card they tell you, the camera, the lens, the, the exposure, thing, yeah. the oh, settings, cool. that is cool. all of that, which is kind of fun. If so you're that you, so that you can then take that and give it to AI and recreate the image almost exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you can go to Mid Journey. <laughs> all right, what else we got? I think Ibex is still winning for me. Wow, oh, I love oh, those. Some hippos. That so might for me. That's pretty impressive. Underwater hippo dance. Yeah. You, you have like an emotional connection to this image. I can so, tell. Well, just one, this is you. in Cozy Bay where I filmed hippos underwater. Okay. Um, which was very hard to do. We did it with an ROV. Uh -huh. uh, but it's just it's just a phenomenal thing to see. I mean, it's the most aggressive, most dangerous animal basically in the world. Yeah. And you're underwater in a photo with it. This is done with a camera trap, I'm sure, not by a diver. Yeah, sure, like but it. still. Look at the, the rays of sun shining down through the water onto the hippos. Yeah, phenomenal. And That's is that is that a baby yeah. hippo and a like a it's a mom and two two calves. Yeah. yeah. A mom and two calves. Yep. Now, did this just take the lead? Not if not for one I want in my house. Okay. No. The composition of that Ibex photo is Flawless. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's yeah, a, it's a picture some, of a spider. Some artifacts. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a snooze. Yeah, that's a that's, ten-year-old spider. That's, that's, I, I, that's I, a snooze. I have stuff like that on my iPhone. Yeah, that's a snooze. All right, let's get to the number one. Go, all the no, way these are these are just winners in different categories. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Is that now? What so is that? Is that tapir a, in Brazil? Tapir. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it doesn't doesn't do much for me. I get it. Like, there's cool lighting on it. It's it's again. It's interesting because tapers are cool. The first the first couple were just like straight photographs, and like a lot of these are super creative. Like, kind of, you know, yeah, long exposure, yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. And yeah. I, you know, I I'm with Forrest. I'm kind of drawn more to just like the basic, like, wow, you captured you this captured raw moment. ass moment. Sure, in, exactly right. Sure, nature. Sure. Let's see what else we got. I like this. That's heinous. What is that? Like a polluted? Oh, it's shanties somewhere. Yeah, it's this is the this is the Dead River in Jakarta. What well, uh, is snooze? Plastic and human waste in agriculture. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, it's snooze. supposed to make you depressed. It doesn't work. Yeah. I, I'm depressed because of what a boring photo it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty cool. All right, that's the end. Oh, okay. All right, so what about you guys? I would say Ibex and Hippo are very close for me. Yeah. Honestly, I think if I had to have one in my house, I'd actually I'm gonna change my vote. I'd have the hippo. Uh, it's close the, to home for me. The hippo, it's just more fun to look at. Yep. Uh, the orca's right up there. Shoot. Yeah. I'm going hippo. Just look hippo. at the look on that baby hippo. It's crazy. Face. Yeah. It's crazy. It, yeah. It's crazy unanimous. Honestly, like the colors of this are are so sweet. Like it's hard to tell exactly what's going on behind the yep. first calf. So it's a conversation piece. Also, if you don't have the capability of watching this as a video pod, go to npr.org, and they have the yeah, article scroll with from us. the center. I'm going to steal all these. This is my new desktop background before I made it. <laughs> the home. hippo? Guaranteed. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, it's pretty Yeah, sweet. I love it. All right, all right guys. Well, thank you for joining us on our yeah. very special bonus pod. It's been yeah. fun. Um, you know, make sure you enter. This is a chance to win a sweet set of Brackish gear. $500 gift card. That's a lot. You That's can get something for you and for your missus, vice versa. Get it for somebody else, your mom, your dad. No Nobody doesn't like just, it. Just hit yeah. that link. Yeah. Just hit the link in the description and uh, look yeah. dapper like us. Yeah. yeah. This was fun doing a little sneaky bonus. That's nice. Oh, Kyle, please cut out all the swears. Sorry. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Lots more work for you, Kyle. <laughs>